There's been a lot of good Nickies throughout history. There's Nikki Bella, Nikki Six, Nikki Kidman. <clears throat> of all the intriguing figures the Trump administration has produced, Kellyanne Conway, Michael Cohen, Omarosa, none possibly is more fascinating than Nikki Haley. Haley, you'll remember, I hope, spent almost two years as the Trump administration's ambassador to the United Nations. And unlike almost everybody else who has left the president's side, Haley actually did so on very good terms. She's done a fantastic job and we've done a fantastic job together. We've solved a lot of problems and we're in the process of solving a lot of problems. President Trump said of Haley in the Oval Office when she announced her plans to leave the White House at the end of 2018, which is kind of weird and unique especially because Haley, both before she came into the Trump administration and even while she was a part of it, was critical of President Trump from time to time. So in the Republican response to President Barack Obama's final State of the Union speech in January 2016, even as Donald Trump was in the midst of a hostile takeover of the Republican Party, Haley said this, quote, During anxious times, it can be tempting to follow the siren call of the angriest voices. We must resist that temptation. No one who is willing to work hard, abide by our laws, and love our traditions should ever feel unwelcome in this country. Who would she be talking about there? Oh. Now, within months, Trump attacked Haley on Twitter because that's what he does. Quote, the people of South Carolina are embarrassed by Nikki Haley. He wrote in early March 2016. To which Haley responded with, Terrific wry Southern charm, quote, bless your heart, end quote. Now, just before the 2016 election, Haley said she would vote for Trump, even though she was, quote, not a fan. So it was somewhat shocking when Trump named Haley to a high profile post to represent the US at the United Nations. And even more surprising that he stood by her when she continued to offer criticism, albeit more mutedly, of his rhetoric as president. The prime example came in the wake of Trump's both sides comments about the white nationalist violence in Charlottesville, Virginia in 2017. Haley sent an email to her staff making clear that, quote, we must denounce them at every turn and make them feel like they are on an island and isolate them the same way they wish to isolate others. She also said she had a private conversation with Trump about the incident and his response to the incident, but would not describe the nature of that discussion. Not the same, of course, as publicly attacking the president, but it's still farther than many Republicans, especially those in his cabinet, were willing to go at the time, or really even now. Now, once Haley left office, she actually sort of kept it up. She called Trump's attack on Baltimore Congressman Elijah Cummings and his native city, quote, unnecessary, end quote. Following Trump's decision to remove American troops from northern Syria, Haley said leaving the Kurds to die was, quote, a big mistake, end quote. And yet, and yet, Haley has also managed to balance those Trump critiques with enough praise for the president to stay in his and his supporters' good graces. The president was the choice of the people in accordance with our founding char charter. No policy disagreement with him, no matter how heartfelt, justifies undermining the lawful authority that is vested in his office by the Constitution. And in her memoir, which is called With All Due Respect, about her time in the Trump administration, Haley accused then White House Chief of Staff John Kelly and Secretary of State Rex Tillerson of trying, unsuccessfully, to recruit her into an effort to subvert the will of the president. To undermine a president is really a very dangerous thing. And it goes against the Constitution, and it goes against what the American people want. And it was, was offensive. In her publicity tour for that memoir, Haley was asked whether she believed Trump was truthful and fit for office, to which she responded, In every instance that I dealt with him, he was truthful, he listened, and he was great to work with. <laughs> okay, everyone's got their own opinions. Now, what exactly is Haley playing at here? Is she trying to carve out a space apart from Trump within the Republican Party? Or is she angling for some other, more prominent role in his White House. Maybe it's something in between. So there's been rampant speculation for months and months and months that Haley is, maybe, keeping herself in the mix as a possible replacement for Vice President Mike Pence on the 2020 ticket if the always unpredictable Trump decides to make that sort of move, which he's probably not going to do, but. It's amazing how this Vice President stuff st still keeps coming up. 
the vice president and the president are a great ticket together. They're solid, solid enough that they're going to win together. There is no truth whatsoever that I would ever in any way look to get that position. I think Mike is great for the job, and I think that he's the right partner for the president. Okay, so let's assume that's out, at least for now. So my belief is this. Haley isn't making moves for the short term. She's making moves and plays for the long term. And by long term, I mean running for president in her own right by as early as 2024. So what Haley seems to want to do when she runs for that nation-sized office is position herself somewhere in between diehard Trump supporters and the party establishment, let's say represented in this case by the likes of Utah Senator Mitt Romney. So she can point to her critiques of Trump on matters of principle like Charlottesville, but she will also use her memoir and other public statements to make clear to the Trumpers that she refused to take part in the effort to undermine President Trump while he was in office. So will it work? Who knows? That's why politics is great, we don't. It's hard to know what the Republican Party will look like or want in the post-Trump era. But Haley is betting that she'll find the right mix between Trumpism and not in the coming years. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every Tuesday, Thursday, and an impeachment special edition on the weekends. Watch them all.